You're watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV from Toronto, Ontario. I'm Catherine Bullock. Assalamu alaikum and greetings of peace. Today, a conversation with Masiullah Hanif on what it's like to grow up as a Canadian Afghan. But first, some news headlines. Saskatchewan and Alberta on road to pre-COVID normalcy. Muslim Uyghur community protests CBC coverage of Olympics. Edmonton police looking for suspect in hate-motivated attack. And world's biggest companies exaggerate their climate actions. And now the details. Saskatchewan and Alberta laid a roadmap yesterday to resume the pre-COVID lifestyle, putting pandemic-related restrictions backstage. Saskatchewan will no longer use vaccination passports starting Monday. Other pandemic-related restrictions will be lifted by the end of February, revealed Premier Scott Moe. Similarly, Alberta will discard vaccination passports starting tonight at midnight. On Monday, school children will not have to wear masks and those under 12 will not need to wear them anywhere. Oppositions in both provinces has, have criticised their premiers for their reopening plans, reminiscent of their previous summer decisions which spiked COVID-19 cases. Uyghur Muslims protested outside CBC Windsor on Friday for broadcasting the 2022 Beijing Olympics, despite China's human rights violations in Xinjiang. Alem Yuxil, a protester and member of the Uyghur Youth Group of Canada, told local media sources that he wants Canadians to condemn genocide and boycott the Games. He also criticised the lack of response from the International Olympic Committee, or IOC, to change the host country on account of China's inhumane treatment of Uyghur Muslims. CBC's Director of Media Relations and Issues Management, Leon Ma, says that they are obligated to cover the Olympics because of an agreement with the IOC. Edmonton police are looking for a suspect after a black man was attacked in what they believe was a hate-motivated incident. The police say the victim was walking when another man shouted a racial slur from across the street, ran up to the victim and punched and kicked him until he fell unconscious. The victim was treated at the hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. Edmonton police are encouraging anyone with information to come forward. A new study released Monday shows that the world's largest corporations plan to reduce absolute carbon emissions by only 40%, far shorter than their zero net claims. New Climate Institute and Carbon Market Watch found that the climate pledges of most multinational firms cannot be taken at face value. The study assessed the transparency of each firm's climate pledges and gave it an integrity rating which was based on climate targets and progress in reducing emissions. Amazon, Google and Volkswagen were among those found to have low integrity on net zero targets, while Unilever, Nestle and BMW Group had very low integrity. And that's it for the news. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a young Afghan student or a Canadian of Afghan descent? in Canada during this time of the Taliban retakeover of Afghanistan and the massive influx of new refugees. Well, to share with us his experience, we have Masiullah Hanif, a former president of the Afghan Students Association from the University of Toronto, Mississauga. Welcome to the show. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you for having me, Dr. Bola. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. I just uh, mentioned, as you heard, about what it's like to be a young Afghan of uh, or a Canadian of Afghan descent. Uh, and I believe that you yourself were born in Canada of Afghan parents. What's it been like for you and your family to watch what's going on over there in Afghanistan? Oh, it's been difficult, really tough. Um, when we heard the news of the Taliban takeover leading up to the week on uh, Sunday, August 15, it was tough watching the news. I was keeping up with the trends, what's happening. And then when it occurred, uh, my mom, dad, sister were all really down. Um, extended family members as well. Um, then we did have an event that day as well, raising awareness on the situation and calling out for the Canadian government. 
on in response to what's happening in the country. Um, you, mentioned was, that you, you mentioned that you had an event. So this was when yeah. you were president of the Afghan Students Association. Is that the event you're mentioning? No. So this is uh, when I left it. I left in April 2021 as I graduated from UTM, University of Toronto, Mississauga. Um, but this was a coordinated event by different nonprofit organizations, Afghan organizations. Um, we had organized it prior to knowing that the country was going to fall on the 15th. Um, so just raising awareness of that as well. And it was a great turnout. A lot of events came out, let go of the frustrations, um, raising awareness on what was happening in the country and what we want the Canadian government to do on the and response. And what do you want the Canadian government to do? Uh, what we requested was that they, inc uh, they increased their number of settle resettlement of Afghans coming into the country. Um, and for them to just raise awareness on multinational level uh, organization like the UN to fight for Afghan rights, minority rights, female rights, they're in danger under the Taliban, as it had been back in 2001 prior. So that's and probably... What's your, what's your parents' story, if it's not too personal? Like, how did they come to Canada? So they came... So what happened was that uh, it was a 1990 civil war. They left Afghanistan in 1990, uh, I believe, 1994. Mm. Uh, they went to Pakistan, neighboring country Pakistan. They lived there for two years and they applied for refugee status. Um, they, they got it eventually, and they came into the country in Canada in 1996. And then you were born here after that? I was born here, yeah, after that. So you you had parents who were Afghan refugees. Does that give you a special connection to the refugees who are coming in now? Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. How my mother, you know, explains the stories of leaving the country, settling in a second or third country until they're coming over into Canada, um, the difficulties they had to go through. Um, the challenges, um, I can definitely connect. I can definitely understand where these income refugees are coming from. And I do hope that I can somehow help them out when they arrive or the influx that has arrived so far. What do you think is the, the hardest thing that they'll be facing right now in, in, in the early years? Uh, resettling, getting to know the language better, finding a, accommodations, living accommodations, um, getting a job, you know, these kind of stuff, if the children are in the middle of school, getting yourself back into school and, you know, getting aware of the culture, the country, the language again, all these processes, it takes some time. Um, but what, I just hope once it goes through that, they'll be well off. You mentioned that you were the former president of the Afghan Students Association at the University of Toronto, Mississauga, and now you're not because you graduated. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. The uh, membership, is it mostly... Uh, Afghan uh, students who've arrived as kids or adults or teenagers, I guess, or yeah. people like yourself who were born to Afghan parents? Uh, so primarily when I was an executive, the, the cohort of executives that was with us, um, they were they were either born here or they came here when they were very young. So it's primarily Afghan students who have been raised in Canada and are tuned primarily to the Canadian culture, but who do have a, a close connection with their homeland either through their parents' stories and at home or through early memories when they're in the country. And is the feeling of being Canadian or being Afghan or being hy hyphenated? Uh, can you rephrase that? Is the feeling mostly of being an Afghan in Canada or a Canadian with Afghan heritage or being a Canadian Afghan or I'm Canadian or how does the whole identity question uh, make, it, make its way through the members of that association? Mm. So for a lot of the members, um, we have this feeling that we are Afghan, that we can connect our heritage to the country. A lot of our daily lives, you know, revolve around our Afghan identity at home with our friends. But then at the same time, you know, we believe that we are Canadian. We've been raised here. Um, we've been through the institution in this country. We work for the country. We study in it. So there's always this like clash of feelings like, do I really belong here or am I really back from there? But um, a lot of us do get the sense that you know, we are both Afghan and Canadian, but that we should identify as Canadian and Afghan first because we are children of Canada as well and we're here to serve the country. What were the normal activities of the association while you were president? So normal activities, um, a lot of it was planning for the big events that we would hold at the end of the year. Um, for example, when I was an executive for the event, as an events coordinator, we prepared for the Nowruz event, the Persian New Year event which was in spring of 2018. 
mm -hmm. um, planning for it, and then actually hosting it. Same thing goes for the Avian Independence Day event that we ha held in summer of 2019. Um, and then we also participate in a lot of UTMSU coordinated events, such mm -hmm. as the opening week, where we showcase our culture uh, and, you know, table and get different members, different UTM members to come on and join our email list. And then the culture week, where we show off the culture, we are about culture, attire, food, fun facts, and so on. So a lot of it was planning, but then also hosting those major events that we had. Mm. Do the political divisions in Afghanistan affect relations between the members of the student association? Are there fallings out or a sense of unity or how does it affect you? So there was this general sense of unity. All oh, we're all here for one purpose and cause to sh showcase our culture, connect Afghan students at UTM and outside in a safe space to get together. Um, but there were some senses, cases where we would have some disagreements on, on, you know, in terms of political ideologies or all that kind of stuff. But it, it never got in the way of how well we communicated or our friendships or getting those events completed and done. So it, it never really affected our work and our friendships in that sense. No. I'm glad to know that. Yeah. What about being uh, from the Afghan heritage in the wider Muslim student population or wider population at the university? We know that there's a lot of discrimination and racism against Muslims, against South Asians. Are those factors that you also had to negotiate as a club? Uh, no, not necessarily. Um, we did have, we, we would try to engage other Muslim students to join us and uh, come to our events or coordinate events with them. Um, that was one major thing we had to work with. We wanted to stretch out to a cross-wide UTM community, especially our Muslim fellow Muslims. But in terms of uh, those kind of situations, no, we never really had to face any of that kind of stuff. Well, I'm glad to hear that. So do you have any final words, uh, um, any message to the Canadian community or the Afghan community or the young people of Afghan descent before we end? Um, I just tell them, uh, stay strong. Unity is the best way to go. Um, whenever you can, get involved with having community initiatives or projects, get together with your people um, and just stay strong and keep moving forward. Um, education is the best way. Um, that's how we make our family proud, keep our, uh, and raise the side of our country and, you know, have everything moving forward well. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for coming on the show to share your experiences with us today. And good luck for the next phase of your life. Thank you, Doctor. I appreciate it. You've been watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Stay tuned for our next episode. Share, like and subscribe. Stay safe and God bless.